Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome back. We're doing another spread in the Pocky Art Journal today. It's getting pretty thick, and I'm not even halfway through the signatures, so this will be interesting as we go along. This is the color palette for today. Nice, bright, summery colors. Not quite summer here yet, but at least we finally have spring, so that's something. On this page, I've already drawn some squares. I wanted to kind of not duplicate this pattern on this piece of paper, but do something similar. I also have this paper, and then I cut out this little piece of paper to make a pocket for this tag that I made. I got an eyelet kit at a garage sale, so I decided I was going to make some tags. So that was fun. And I will make tags in another video, but not this one. So I've got my colors and I've got my papers and we're going to do some collage and some painting. And the first order of business is to get out my palette and my paints. And these are all liquid um, fluid acrylics. And the orange one is uh, by Deco Art, and the other two are golden. And the Deco Art tends to be more translucent than the golden acrylics, which sometimes I like and sometimes I don't, depending on what I need it for. So I'm just mixing my colors. It can be really hard to get these uh, paint bottles open sometimes, particularly if there's, as you can see, paint all stuck on the inside. I also don't have particularly good fingers, so sometimes I need help getting bottles open. So I'm mixing together a medium cadmium yellow with a um, yellow ochre and then this is Liquitex Basics Fluid Acrylics which I just found at Michael's. I haven't used these before and that one I don't know what happened. It was a brand new bottle and something got wonky with the seal on it. I'm not really sure what happened there but whatever it's not like I'm drinking it so I you know it's paint it'll be fine. So when I started out, I actually had no idea how the Liquitex paints were going to work. Um, I haven't, I've used Liquitex basics, but not fluid acrylics with the basics. And, you know, they're similar to the Deco Art paints. Um, it's pretty translucent, which I don't mind necessarily. But it's something you have to plan for if you really want more opaque coverage. So I'm just randomly painting squares here. One of these days I'm going to get myself some clips and hold my pages open with clips instead of with my hands. Particularly because I tend to stick my fingers in the wet paint. Oh, I don't know if you heard that. My daughter's clock just went off. It goes off every half hour. I don't know how she can stand it. All night long having to listen to that. It would drive me crazy. Since we're just sitting here watching me paint, I think I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, why I do art. Um, I was just kind of born a creator. I've always liked to create things. Um, I like to focus on beauty rather than 
emotions. Some people use art to express their express their emotions. I just like to make things that look pretty. And I used to kind of have a problem with that. I thought, what's the purpose of art? It's just to look pretty. It's not really useful. But you know what? It, it really is. It is useful. Everybody likes to look at things that are beautiful, however they happen to define beautiful. We spend our lives in search of it. And really, it, it makes us happy. And being happy is definitely useful. I mean, really, do you want to be around somebody who's miserable all the time or somebody who's happy? Do you want to be miserable all the time or do you want to be happy? If art makes you happy, it's useful. It makes the world a better place just because it makes us better people. I know there are a lot of people who don't really... I, I want to say they don't appreciate art, but that's not really true. I think they don't understand how much they appreciate art. It's people who disparage art, particularly visual art, they would put up a big fight if you took away their music or their video games or their movies that are based on comic books. All of these things are art. Just because you don't appreciate one particular kind of art doesn't mean art is useless. Not only on a societal level, but art is really useful on personal levels. It helps people process emotions and get in touch with their emotions. It helps people connect to each other and realize that, hey, you know, you like the same things I like. That's really cool. That's a connection we have. Or, wow, somebody else felt the same thing that I do. We really all have the same emotions and now I don't feel so alone. Art is a very important part of our culture. Not only that, but art is informative. Like we know a lot of the things we know about how primitive people lived because of cave paintings. We have a lot of political art through history. Art showed us you know, how people were thinking at the time and what their fashions were and what was important to them. How they thought, what they worshipped. Art's a lot more useful than some people give it credit for. And art is also healing. It's very healing to create something. That's why there's all different kinds of art therapies. There's visual art therapy, there's movement therapy, there's music therapy, because it heals. I'm creating a pocket. This is a little piece of paper that I just got in a scrap pack from Walmart, and I love the texture. It's kind of like a lizard. And that little blue and white piece of paper was a piece of cardstock, so that was a little harder to stick down. Kind of had to go back in and make sure I got the inside edge there. And I'm just layering all these on top of each other. Making sure my tag fits. Now that blue piece of paper has some white lines on it, little dashed lines, and it looks like stitching. So I'm going to replicate that stitching effect on the other page too. I really like to add stitching in my pieces. I, I like sewing a lot. I like, the, I like the concept of sewing a lot, but I don't have the patience to sew very much myself. but I can add the effect with paint. Now I never noticed till I watched this playing back in fast motion 
that I spend a lot of time when I draw preparing to draw rather than actually drawing. I'll kind of move my pen over the page before I actually set it on the page to make sure I have the motion that I want to use, basically so I don't screw up what I'm doing. I, it's kind of a practice run, but it sure looks funny when you speed it up. I'm bringing in some of the dark red that's on the other page. I'm just doing some basic flower shapes. I kind of had a mid-century modern idea with this spread. Just kind of wanted some of the the shapes and the colors. I'm a big fan of mid-century modern. I think it's really just fun and playful. I'm missing a lot of fun in life. I just think of that meme that shows McDonald's from the 1980s where it's all cheerful and there were these big you know, sculptured trees with faces and the playground and whatever. And then they show the picture of McDonald's today where it's all industrial looking and gray and depressing. <laughs> and I think as a society, we've kind of moved in this depressing direction and forgotten what fun is. So I like to, to do the whole mid-century modern thing when the colors were bright and the shapes were cool and everything is just more cheerful. I guess it's kind of my way of counteracting all the depressing things that are happening. It's been a hard century to live through so far. I'm going to do a bird, since I had some blue that I needed to use. And again, just simple shapes. You really don't need to know how to draw to make good art, which sounds really weird. But it's true. I mean, Jackson Pollock made art that goes for, you know, millions of dollars, and he didn't draw at all. Of course, there are plenty of people who would say Jackson Pollock isn't good art, but there are plenty of others who do, so. Regardless of your opinion about it, it is art and it's highly sought after art. So if you can't draw, don't let that stop you from making art. It can be intimidating to even call it art. I mean, if, if you wanna start an art practice and you don't know where to begin, and you don't really have a whole lot of artistic skills, don't even call it art. Just think of it as decorating a page. It's so much less press pressure when you just think of it as decorating rather than making art. I've got my little tag decorated and now I'm adding stitching along the outside in orange. You just do all these little things and they all come together and they create a nice piece of art. Okay, so here I just stuck my, <laughs> I stuck my finger in the wet paint and smudged it all on the right side there, which thankfully with acrylics isn't a huge deal because then I just go back and touch it up. But you know, these things happen. See, all better. Except that the white paint pen was a little bit different color than the tag on the paper. So then I had to go through and color all of the white parts white. <laughs> a little bit irritating, but not that big of a deal. And it turned out good in the end. If you screw something up, just keep working with it until it looks better. I 
and there we go. Now I want to put a bird on the other side of the page and I'm going to do it with scrapbook paper. And I'm purposely cutting out my shape to be really huge because I didn't really kind of want to measure it ahead of time. I don't like measuring things. I just like going for stuff. And it's easy to cut things down and not easy to cut them bigger. <laughs> little teardrop for the wing. Really layering simple shapes creates a complex piece. It's just one simple thing at a time. Put my eye on the bird. Anytime you do an eye, you should always do a little light dot in it because that brings it to life. When it's just flat black, it kind of looks like a shark's eye. It's, it looks all dead. But when you put that little sparkle in there, it brings it to life. I'm going to draw some legs on him. I didn't think about it too hard. I just, you know, drew something on there. I wanted it to be cute. I'm not going for any kind of realism here. And I've got my little glitter blue pen here and doing some stitching. There was no purpose for choosing the glitter pen other than I happen to have a dark blue one. And I'm going to take my Stabilo pencil, which is water soluble, and I'm going to do some shadows. And I like to do shadows underneath and then either to the right or to the left. And in this case, I'm doing shadows to the left. It adds a little bit of depth and makes it pop off the background a little bit. I'm using my water brush to soften that line. I tend to dip my water brush. I don't really fill it with water because I can't get as much control of how much water I'm using if I have the, the barrel filled. So when you squeeze it, a lot of water tends to come out. In this case, I just wanted a little bit of water, so I just dip it into some water. I'm just writing fun on here with my ink pen. So that's what art is all about for me. It's just fun. It's one of the things I look forward to when I get up in the morning. So I've got my letter stamps. I have several sets of letter stamps. These are new ones, and I really like them. I got them at a garage sale for like 50 cents. And I'm purposely offsetting my letters because I'm spelling out whimsy, and I wanted to be whimsical with it. Plus, they fit on the page that way. Now at this part, I had thought I was done and I'd ended the video, but the more I looked at it, the more I thought it wasn't quite finished. I wanted another blue element in to have three blue elements, but also just, I wanted more whimsy. It was kind of whimsical as is, but I wanted it more whimsical. I also wanted to bring in some of those outline squares that are on that red piece of paper on the left. 
So I'm going over all of the letters with my markers and making squares, and then I'll outline the squares. It's not uncommon for me to think I'm done with a piece and walk away from it and come back and think, hmm, I need something else in here. Art tends to be a work in progress all the time anyway. The hard part is knowing when you're finished. And there's the outline for the squares. I'm outlining the dark blue squares in light blue and the light blue squares in dark blue. And then I'll get my letter blocks back out. And because I don't have white ink, I'm going to use fluid acrylics and my brayer. And do some white letters. I find that using acrylic paint isn't as clean as using archival ink, but it gets the job done enough that you can see the shape of the letters anyway. This one I had to restamp. That one turned out cleaner than the W. But after I get done stamping, I'm not done with the letter, so all I need is the basic shape of the letter. And I found it's better to use the brayer in between stamping rather than to just try to stamp all the letters after braying once. I'm using my jelly roll pen and going over the letters and you can see now they're much cleaner. My paint palette, by the way, is just a piece of glass out of an old picture frame. I have an actual palette with little, you know, sections in it, but I find it hard to clean and I really like the piece of glass better. Here I'm taking a uh, ink pen and again doing the drop shadow on the bottom and the left side. And that's my whimsical spread. Simple shapes layered to make something fun and a little complicated looking. Two little bird buddies. I hope you had fun watching. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you again next time.